This is the test, triaxial uh, test setup, which uh, allows you to conduct unconsolidated undrained, consolidated undrained, and consolidated drain tests. This is the test multiplex universal electromechanical machine, which has triaxial cell mounted on it. And this is a constant pressure unit, which is connected to the cell, and this is another. Uh, constant pressure unit, same with the other one. And this is the volume change device, which uh, measures the water volume that goes in or out into the specimen. We also have a de-airing tank in order to use the de-aired air, de water into the test uh, while do, doing the tests. And we have a vacuum panel over here, uh, which makes the uh, water inside the tank be aired. We have a data loader uh, which co uh, collects the data from the LVDT's pressure transducers over the system and uh, gathers them and sends these data, data to the uh, computer software program. The constant pressure unit has a power inlet on the right side and uh, power on and off button just about the uh, power inlet. We also have a stop and stop button which initiates the machine and stops it. We also have a pressure control knob over here. We can, uh, while we are turning it in uh, clockwise direction, it increases the pressure. While returning it on the counterclockwise direction, it is the, the pressure is decreased. This is uh, just to maintain a constant pressure. Uh, before giving it to the cell or the inside of the specimen. And we also have a dump knob over here. In case of an emergency or uh, when it required, when you pull this knob on this direction, it just releases the pressure inside of the oil tank again and pressure, is, uh, pressure becomes zero. This is the volume change device. It is connected to connected to the uh, constant pressure unit again. It is used with the uh, water which is fed into the specimen. Uh, it, is, uh, it is important to determine uh, how many uh, water is uh, go, go inside of the specimen or outside of the specimen. Uh, it has a cylindrical uh, piston cylinder assembly which has a, a LVDT unit on it to measure this uh, vertical displacement and uh, by the program it calculates the volume change of total volume change. It has a uh, flow up and flow down knob on it which allows uh, water flows from downside to upside or uh, upside uh, from the downside. It has a uh, again volume change or bypass knob. On the bypass mode, the, uh, the water which is uh, fed from the <coughs> constant pressure unit is directly goes inside the specimen. If we, put, if we uh, choose the volume change, it, the water again goes from the volume change device and then goes to the specimen again, which makes us possible to determine uh, the uh, measured water amount. Let us start with the assemblage of the system. The, air water, uh, the aeration water tank is, uh, has two outlets. One of them is connected to, to the uh, constant pressure unit inlet. And the other one, one uh, line is connected to the other constant pressure unit inlet over here. Uh, the, actually, this, this constant pressure unit is uh, directly connected, the outlet of the constant pressure unit is directly connected to the cell pressure uh, of the uh, triaxial cell and creates a chamber pressure inside the cell. And the other one uh, has an outlet to the volume change device. And the uh, outlet of the volume change device is connected to the back pressure which feeds the specimen with water from the top cap. And this is the pore pressure measurement branch, which is connected to, to, uh, connected to the nowhere. 
And this is the multiplex machine, which, is, which has the triaxial cell uh, mounted on it. The triaxial cell has a piston to transduce the force to the specimen vertically. And this piston is connected to a S-type uh, pressure um, <coughs> load, load cell, which is a 5,100 kg of load capacity. The triaxial cell has three pressure transducers mounted on it, and it will be connected to the load, uh, data loader afterwards. This is the pore pressure. This is the pore pressure transducer. One of the uh, veins which connects it to the cell is opened all the time, and the other one is always closed. This is just for the measurement of the pore pressure of the specimen inside. And this is a cell pressure measuring transducer. And while during the test, the both veins are opened. And finally, the last transducer is to measure the pressure inside of the specimen, which is called back pressure. And this is also open during the CU and CD tests, which is not necessary for UU tests. And we have also a linear variable displacement transducer, which is called the LVDT shortly, mounted on the uh, device, which uh, makes possible to measure the vertical displacement of the specimen. This load cell and the LBDT is uh, directly connected to the uh, multiplex machine from the back side. Back side. This uh, load cell and LBDT communicates with the machine, and while the, uh, conducting the test, it uh, determines how the speed and the load values to the uh, machine. Here we have. Uh, on the multiplex machine, we have an emergency start and stop button. Now we are operating, uh, opening the uh, device. This is the PC100 TFT unit, which uh, makes us easier to select the test parameters, specimen dimensions, and so on. The test can uh, also be started and stopped uh, from this, uh, using this TFT screen, as well as the program on the computer. After the screen has uh, opened, we have three selections. One of them is CBR, the other one is Marshall, and the last one is the triaxial tests. We are choosing the triaxial here. Now we have uh, specimen settings menu, test parameters, test selection, device settings, decimal points, test results, and uh, test screen. The first menu on the screen is specimen settings. Since we have used the 50 mm diameter of specimen, we are going to enter the diameter as 50 millimeters and the height of our specimen is 100 millimeters as you can see the area is calculated automatically and assuming that this is the first test uh, we are entering the first lab number one and by entering OK we are out of this menu the second menu is test parameters. The uh, first option shows us the test number. We are entering the first test. And the second one is maximum load. And the third one is maximum displacement. And the fourth one is the failure threshold. And the failure detection uh, is set as 10%. Here we have test speed. The speed is selected 
as 0.5 or any other speed that is uh, necessary on the uh, shearing operation. It can be determined by some calculations or the uh, related standards. But uh, for now we are choosing as 0.5 millimeters per minute and pressing OK. Displacement tail which makes us to set displacement as zero and maximum graphic displacement and maximum graphic load. The third option is the test selection. As you can see, you can select CBR, Marshall or Triaxial. Since we are going to conduct the Triaxial testing, we already initially selected the Triaxial. And the fourth one is device settings. Here you in the general tab, you can set the time and the date and the language. And the second tab is units. It is uh, initially selected as uh, SI unit system, which is metric system. And the other uh, menus are uh, load displacement, uh, load de decimal points, uh, stress decimal points, and displacement decimal points, which are uh, necessary significant figures that have to be selected before test. And here is the graph settings. You can uh, change the color of titles, axes, graphs and the grid lines and so on while using this menu and the color buttons over here. The uh, sixth menu is the uh, test results menu. It is not necessary to enter any uh, value over here because uh, according to our uh, specimen settings and the uh, related values, uh, these will be uh, automatically show up on the uh, test report. And the last one is the uh, and uh, import the last important one is the test screen. This is the uh, test screen. After uh, entering all the uh, required values about the specimen and the speed and so on, uh, we can manipulate the test or initiate the test from uh, this menu. Here you can see maximum stress speed set as 0.5 millimeters per minute. Uh, load and displacement and uh, test start time and test end time. Here you can <coughs> read the loading and the displacement over here. The first button of the six over here is tear load which sets the initial load as zero. Second one is tear displacement, which sets the initial displacement to zero. And the third button initiates the test. And the fourth one stops the test. And the fifth one resets the value. And uh, the last one uh, goes to the uh, main menu. I'm going to show just a representation at this speed, at these confinement pressures, for example, we can initiate the test. And you can see the uh, load increasing and the displacement. Now I'm stopping. And while resetting it, we are, we are now uh, turned to the initial values. Here on this table we have all the tools that we need to assemble a triaxial cell with the specimen inside it. Here we have a triaxial cell pedestal, the top cap with the drainage tube, and the uh, triaxial cell upper part, 
uh, fixing screws, we have O-ring placing apparatus and O-rings, two porous stones, two filtered papers, and a membrane, membrane placing apparatus, split molds to prepare disturbed specimens, and a cutter in order to uh, cut the undisturbed specimens from the blocks, and we have a uh, pre-made uh, specimen over here. Now we are going to assemble the tracksuit itself. We are starting to place one power stone at the very bottom of the pedestal and then the one filter paper on it. And our soil specimen and filter paper again and at the very top one power stone. Now we have a membrane dressed on the membrane placing of apparatus and we are creating a suction inside of it for the ease of placing the membrane. After placing the membrane placement tool, we are veering the membrane around the specimen. And again, the other one on the bottom of the specimen and over the pedestal. After the membrane is correctly placed, we are removing the membrane placement tool. Now we are going to place the O-rings on the bottom of the pedestal by using the O-ring placing tool. First we are going to wear the O-rings around the O-ring placement apparatus, which is a little bit tough. We are going to use two O-rings at the bottom and two at the top. Now we are going through to at the very top and placing the O-rings. Now again the same procedure for the upper part of the specimen and the top cap. Alright, we are removing the drainage tube on the top cap and we are placing the top cap inside of the membrane and we are placing the O-rings at the top of the specimen and around the top cap. Okay. Now we are before connecting the tube, we are just making county dress dressing to the membrane. And we are finally connecting the drainage back pressure tube. Okay. Now we are going to uh, combine these two parts of the track seal system. And finally we are Connecting the fixing rods.
we are being sure that the fixing rods are tight enough in order to fix and hold all the system together. Now we are going to place the track itself on the top of the mount place. After use, using the, the screws, We are just centering the piston with the load cell. After arrangement is done, we are locking the cross beam over here. Now we are going to place the LVDT. Now it's fixed and free to move. <clears throat> After placing the LVDT, we are going to fill the chamber with the water. In order to do that, we are going to use the, uh, the, air, the airized uh, water inside of this tank uh, via all this unit. We are going to connect this tube to the chamber pressure inlet and we are going to first open the, these valves and we are going to open the valves on the unit and finally we are going to open the valves of the chamber pressure and letting the water rush into the triaxial chamber. While we are doing that, we, uh, we have to be sure that the air bleeding valve should be open in order to let the air go outside freely. And we are going to wait until the chamber is uh, filled and there is no air bubbles left inside. As you can see, our triaxial chamber is filled with water fully. There is no air bubbles left inside and uh, it's ready to go another step. In order to complete the un uh, unconsolidated undrain test, which is called UU, uh, we are going to test three specimens, uh, one after another, and uh, at different chamber pressures, to draw a more, three more circles and a more envelope, which is tangent to those three more circles. Now we have assembled our triaxial ch uh, chamber on top of the uh, multiplex universal testing machine. We have uh, arranged the screws and cross beams for uh, load cell and piston just to touch. And they are all centered. Now on the test screen, we are going to choose test parameters and we are going to choose a predetermined uh, 
compression speed on the shear uh, stage. Let us choose one millimeters per minute. It is okay now. On the test screen, you can see the speed as one millimeters per minute. We are going to tear and reset the uh, load as zero and the tear the displacement. Now, we are going to create a chamber pressure inside the triaxial chamber while using this constant pressure unit. We are going to use this comparator watch to just determine the chamber pressure and stabilize uh, the pressure inside the chamber. And then we are going to go to the program. On the uh, UU software, we are going to create a new folder. Let's say UU. UU. On the general information tab, we have some boxes that you can fill. First one is laboratory number, project number, project name, well known, that sample type, sample shape. On the right side, test standard, sample accept date, test start date, test finish date, used seal, tester and controller. These are the values that, that is going to be presented in the final report. Uh, if you enter uh, these values on the, after the test is completed, they are all going to be appear in the final report. Now, the first tab on the left side is the graphics information. On the right side, there is some uh, boxes that needs to be filled, uh, you know, about the specimen. Again, we have used 50 millimeters diameters uh, sample, and which has a height of 100 millimeters. That's why we are entering 100 millimeters on the sample height. 50 millimeters diameter. And as you can see, area and the volume is automatically calculated. And the other boxes just show the uh, calculated values, for example, strain, area, uh, deviatoric stress, sigma 1 minus sigma 3, and so on. On the upper box, we have sample number that changes. For example, sample number 2, 3. Since this is the first sample that we are going to test, we, we, I have chosen the first sample. Here, sigma 3 in kilopascals, which, is the, which corresponds to the chamber pressure, you can set any value, for example, uh, 50 kilopascals, 100 kilopascals and 200 kilopascals or 100 kilopascals, 200 kilopascals and 400 kilopascals. Let's start with 100 kilopascal. After setting the sigma 3, uh, which is the chamber pressure, 200 kilopascals, we are going to uh, create that pressure inside the triaxial chamber by using this constant pressure unit. We are going to use this comparator watch which is mounted on the constant pressure unit. Uh, we are going to open to the outlet valve and then we are going to open just one valve uh, on the chamber. We are going to increase pressure to 100 kPa slowly by using this knob. As you can see, it is 90. Yes, 
It is 100 kilopascal. We are waiting to equilibrium. It is 100 kilopascal. After 100 kilopascal is in equilibrium is maintained, we are going to open this valve to let the pressure go inside the triaxial chamber. And wait for a while to just uh, pressure to be stabilized. And now we are going to initiate the test. As you can see on the TFT screen, we have previously determined speed of 1 mm per minute. And we are going to initiate the test using the software. And the machine is going to uh, hire the lower platen with the determined speed. Now, on the program, we are going to press just the start button. And the test will be initiated. As you can see, load and flow values, which is the axial displacement, is increasing. And axial strain percent in percentage and the dev deviatoric stress is automatically calculated by the program. And the more circles is going to be drawn by the program automatically again. On this uh, graph, you can see the uh, load and flow values uh, live. As you can see, the test has initiated, and we are going to wait until the shearing process is done, which will, which may take 10 to 30 minutes, and we are going to wait until the shearing operation is done. Now let's see the test software which is designed uh, specially to conduct CU and CD experiments. This is the program. On the very right uh, side you see the help tab and the next to it there is a language tab and there is a cal calibration menu which allows you to calibrate uh, pressure transducers and LVDT devices. And file analyze. This is for uh, the previous data files uh, to be analyzed. And the very important one is the file test. We are creating a txt file. We have on here uh, up to four different specimen types. Since we are doing with the uh, first specimen, we are choosing specimen number A. And on the here, uh, current test stage and previous test stages are uh, zero because we haven't started the test yet. Now we are going to connect the uh, data loader to the pressure transducers by using these connection cables. The first channel is for cell pressure, therefore it is going to be connected to the uh, cell pressure transducer. And second channel is for pore pressure measurement. Therefore, second connection cable is going to be connected to the pore pressure transducer. And finally, the third channel is for back pressure transducer. And the third cable is going to be connected to the back pressure transducer. 
Okay, on the screen we are seeing some uh, meaningless values because it is just connected and it is also calibrated therefore we are going to just reset the initial values. The axial displacement and the force is going to be reset on the TFT screen here. We are uh, two buttons on the uh, test screen. Uh, one of them is tear load, which resets the uh, load, and tear displacement, which resets the displacement, I mean the LVDT uh, reading values over here. Now they are all set to zero, and we are ready to start the test. Now on the test screen, <coughs> We are going to create a new test file. Let's say consolidated untrained. And after creating this file, we are going to click on the test button. Now we have we have, have here a newly opened uh, button uh, which writes test initialize. We are clicking on it. We are choosing the test type over here, consolidated undrained. Let's say job number one, company name to test, you can write anything. Project X, location Ankara, borehole ID, sample depth, and the date. On the boxes uh, in the middle part of the program, we have uh, diameter, height, initial area, volume, sample weight and bulk density. Since we have prepared 50 mm of specimen, we are going to write 50 mm as the uh, specimen diameter. As you can see, the area is automatically calculated. We have 100 mm of specimen height. We have entered 100 mm and therefore uh, the volume also calculated automatically and before the test we have measured our specimen as 260 grams and we are entering it here and uh, the bulk density is also calculated as uh, 1.32 on the right side of the boxes we have an option to choose the drainage where the drainage is going to be done since our drainage and the back pressure unit is connected to the top, we, we, are, uh, we have selected the top part. Since we have no side drains, we are not clicking this box. And that's it. Now we are clicking the test button again. And as you can see, we have two other boxes opened over here. One of them is test saturation cell pressure increment, and the second one is test saturation back pressure increment. Now, before con uh, continuing the uh, test, we should uh, operate our constant pressure units. Now, let's initiate our constant pressure units. Since the pressure arranging knobs initially on the uh, very counterclockwise direction, the initial pressure is zero. Now we are going to increase the pressure uh, on the chamber, inside of the chamber, to 50 kilopascals because we have selected 50 kilopascals of chamber pressure increments. Now we are going to open this valve on the constant pressure unit, which is connected to here cell pressure outlet. We are just opening the outermost valve. We are not going to open this valve yet. Now we are going to arrange the pressure to 50 kPa while using this knob. And we are going to also check the pressure increasing on the computer screen at the very upper left side. As you can see, it's 43, 
program now we are clicking on the test saturation cell pressure increment and again clicking continue and after I press the uh, start test countdown the co software is going to start counting down as well as uh, I see the zero on the screen I'm going to open the valve to let the pressure inside to the chamber. Two, one, and I open the pressure, and now chamber pressure is increasing. I arrange the pressure here by using this pressure transducer without opening the inside valve, and after uh, simultaneously, after finishing the countdown, I open the inside valve to let the pressure go and uh, affect the specimen inside the chamber. Now, as you can see from the uh, computer screen, the pressure is going to be equilib equilibrated. Now we are going to move on to the second stage by ending this stage. I am clicking to end test stage and test again. Now I am going to click the test saturation back pressure increment which I am going to do the same pressure, uh, same procedure to the uh, back pressure which is inside to the specimen. Now I'm going to arrange the pore pressures again. With this constant, I'm again opening the uh, valve of the constant pressure unit, which is connected to the volume change, and uh, then connected to, to the back pressure from the, the top cap. Now the important thing is we should arrange uh, this now, before uh, starting uh, increasing the pressure, we are going to choose flow up because our piston is very but at very bottom. And then we are going to open the outer valve on the power pressure line, back pressure line. I'm sorry, and I'm going to keep this in inner uh, valve closed. Now I'm going to increase. Uh, the pressure to 40 kilopascals because we have uh, in the beginning uh, of the test we have chosen uh, 10 kilopascals of uh, pressure differential between chamber pressure and back pressure which means we have arranged the uh, cell pressure as 50 kilopascals and now we are going to uh, arrange this one to 40 which makes uh, 10 kilopascals of uh, differential difference Now, as you can see from here, as I move this knob, sorry. as I increase the pressure, the back pressure uh, on the computer screen is going to increase. For, for example, we have exceeded the 40 kilopascal on the back pressure side over here, but since we do, didn't open the inner valve, uh, we are on the safe side. We are now reducing the pressure to 
40, around 40 kilopascals. Now after the arrangement, we are going to open the inner path again and letting the uh, 40 kilopascal pressure go inside to the specimen from the back pressure side, which on the top cap. Now we are going to wait for the pore pressure to be stabilized. After the pore pressure stabilization, we are going to go to another pressure increment to the test saturation cell pressure again, the first, the middle one. Now I'm going to increase the pressure by closing this inner valve again. I'm closing this valve and another increment of 50, which makes 100 kilopascal, is going to be applied inside the cell. As you can see the increase on the test screen. And again, I am going to click to the continue button and it will ask for the countdown again. And the countdown stops. As well as the countdown stops, I am going to open this valve now and letting the 100 kilopascals go inside to the chamber. chamber. And now since we have 10 kilopascals of uh, pressure difference between cell pressure and back pressure, we are going to uh, increase the back pressure to 90 kilopascals. In order to, to, to do that, now we are uh, going to close again the inner valve on the back pressure unit and increase the pressure while using this one. As you can see on the test screen, it is a little bit reached from 90. Yes, it's now around 90 kilopascals. Now we are going to open the inside valve and uh, letting the uh, pore pressure go inside to, to the specimen. Actually, this pressure is uh, this this procedure is called uh, saturation phase, which is uh, going to be followed by the consolidation phase, and this. Uh, Cell pressure increasing and back pressure increasing steps, step by step, they will go until the B value is uh, reached to the, let's say, uh, in some standards it's 95%. And we are checking here uh, the calculation of the B value. 
program calculates the B value automatically and this is now on uh, 0.79. We have to reach 0.95 in order to say that the saturation is completed. It is now 81% and we are waiting for pore pressure readings to stabilize. After pore pressure readings are stabilized, uh, let's say after one minute the change is less than 5%, we can go to another cell pressure and back pressure increasing step. Let's assume that our uh, 90, uh, B value is go to the 95% and we, now we can go to the consolidation process. Now we have uh, calculated the uh, B value, Scampton's B value. After the uh, saturation process, uh, which determined by the Scampton's B value is complete, uh, now we can uh, go forward to the consolidation process. To do that, we are going to choose test consolidation button from the software and follow the instructions simply. On the cell pressure, uh, cell pressure device, we are going to arrange the cell pressure to 290 kilopascals. It is because uh, we have 90 kilopascals of back pressure inside the specimen and our predetermined effective consolidation stress is 200 kilopascals. In order to supply a 200 kilopascals of effective consolidation stress, 200 plus 90 kilopascals gives us a 290 kilopascals of uh, cell pressure requirement. Now, we are going to close the inside valve of the cell pressure inlet and we are going to arrange the cell pressure to 290 kilopascals. On the test screen you can see the increase on the cell pressure. But we didn't apply this stress inside the cell yet. Cell pressure is set to 290 kilopascals. We are going to click the continue button and we are going to press this uh, test countdown. And as the countdown stops, we are going to open the cell pressure valve slowly. Three, two, one, and we are opening it. Now we have increased the uh, cell pressure to 290 kilopascals. We are going to wait a little bit to pressure values to be equilibrated. And after the countdown, we can uh, see that the volume change measurements will be uh, <coughs> reset to uh, zero automatically. We, this process uh, may go a little bit longer and we are going to wait until the consolidation process is complete and we are going to measure the volume uh, of water which goes outside from inside of the specimen with the volume change device. And according to the volume change, uh, we are going to calculate the shear speed. the uh, consolidation process 
And the last stage is the uh, shearing stage, which is uh, written as compression in CU on the software. We are going to follow these instructions again. These instructions are according to the standards. Uh, now, first we are going to close uh, the back pressure valve. And we are going to enter a speed. As you can see from the volume change, we have 3.52 milliliters of water that has uh, go outside from, to, from the specimen. According to that speed, uh, there is a suggested rate in millimeters per minute, which is 0.0002. And we are going to enter that value into the rate that will be used. 3, 0, and 2. This is the uh, compression rate which will, uh, which uh, the multiplex machine is going to move the lower platen upside. And then we are going to reset the force and reset axial displacement. And we are going to uh, start the process of cons uh, shearing. Now we are going to click the continue button and start test. And it will count down and start the compression. As you can see, or maybe here, our multiplex device has started to compression and shearing process which may take uh, quite a long time because the rate is very low uh, and we are going to wait until the uh, pressure is done now as you can see from here on the test screen as the uh, displacement increases, the stress versus displacement graphic will be drawn onto this screen. And after the 10% uh, of axial displacement strain, uh, the, the program will automatically detect the failure and stop the process and give the results to the software program. Now our test uh, has been finished, the shearing process is done. As you can see over here, there is a straight shearing plane after the compression and our specimen has been deformed. We can collect the more circles for UU te test and the uh, <coughs> maximum stress values, uh, load values and etc. from our software and then uh, we can do uh, related calculations or present it as the uh, related format. And this is the end of our uh, experiments. Have a good day.